Good evening. I am Pastor Carrie, and I am glad that you have joined us for worship this evening. Uh, I invite you um, to stand at this time as we continue with our Ash Wednesday worship service. And we will continue with our call to worship based on Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. Against you only have I sinned. And so you are justified when you speak. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Make me hear of joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Give me joy of your saving help again. I shall teach your ways to the wicked. Deliver me from death, O God. Open my lips, O Lord. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifices. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. Be favorable and gracious to Zion. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with burnt offerings and oblations. Let us be seated for a moment of silent meditation.
were created from dust and will return to dust. We are created in love and for love to experience joy in communion with God, to love all people, and to care for all creation. Let us now acknowledge before God and one another our faults and our failings, our need for repentance and God's mercy and forgiveness. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves we have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, God. We have not heard your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. Have mercy on us, God. We confess to you the gravity of our pride, hypocrisy, and impatience. We confess our self-indulgent appetites and our exploitation of other people. We admit our anger and bitterness our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess our love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We often neglect prayer and worship and fail to commend the faith that you have given us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our apathy to human need, and to human suffering, and our indifference in injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, God, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, God. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come before after us. Restore us and let your anger depart from us Let us sing, Lord Jesus, think on me.
A reading from Isaiah 58th chapter. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. A second reading from 2 Corinthians 5th chapter. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, 
we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as pure, poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of our Lord. Be Please be seated. So Ash Wednesday, it is the beginning of our Lenten season a season of contemplation and preparation in anticipation of the Easter celebration of Jesus' resurrection. Now, I grew up associating Lent with a time to give something up so as to help me clo grow closer to Jesus. And as a child, I found that I would like giving up things that I had no use for anyway. Lima beans, <laughs> being nice to my sisters, homework, some of which did not go quite as I had hoped. I did eventually, though, move on to some things that I did like. Giving up chocolate, desserts. The problem was... Giving up these things never actually helped me grow closer to Jesus. It wasn't until I was in college that our campus pastor helped reframe what the Lenten season was about. It is not really about giving things up. It is about making room for Jesus in our hearts. So... How do we best use this season of Lent, this season of preparation to open our hearts, to grow closer to Jesus? 
Well, I think Psalm 51 actually lifts up for us a spiritual discipline, one that we don't usually talk about in terms of a Lenten discipline. It lifts up for us confession. You see, ultimately, it is sin that drives a wedge between us and God. So why not spend these next 40 days of the season of Lent being honest with ourselves, honest about our sin, so that we can be drawn closer to Jesus You see, Psalm 51, it is written by a guy who allowed sin to take hold of his life and stand in his relationship with God. And this guy was David. Now, most of us know David as a man after God's own heart. But he was not without sin To make a long story short, King David had an affair with another man's wife, gets her pregnant, tries to cover it up, and when that does not go well, he arranges to have the woman's husband killed. Now you might be thinking, how in the world did this man get to be after God's own heart? Or maybe you're wondering... Did he really think he'd get away with it? Or maybe you're saying, I would never do anything like that. But the reality is, we all mess up. We all sin. Be it in our thoughts, in our words, through our deeds. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. And most of us, have probably tried to hide our sin from others because of our own guilt and shame. Which is why David's response, when his sin is pointed out to him, becomes so helpful for us. Psalm 51 talks about confession and lays out, I think, three points that I hope will help us to draw closer to God during this season. The first is that confession begins with a change of heart. In the first two verses of Psalm 51, David begs for forgiveness, saying, For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. For the longest time, David tried to hide his sin. But God, through the prophet Nathan, confronts David with his sin and calls him to repent. And David does. And we see him go from denial to conviction to sadness. The first step in Receiving forgiveness for our sin is a willingness to see our own sin and move from denial to conviction to sorrow. A churchy word that we say is contrition. A genuine sorrow for our wrongdoing. A change of heart. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that I have been caught doing the wrong thing. Plenty as a child and as my mother would attest, who is here, she would say to me, now go tell your sister that you're sorry. And I'm going to tell you, from both sides of the coin, as a child and as a parent, you know when the words, I'm sorry, reflect a change in heart. But so often, when we have our sin pointed out, instead of being contrite, we want to justify our sin or pretend that it really isn't as bad as they think it is or try to explain why it really isn't sin at all. And this refusal to see our sin as sin, 
It actually stands in our way of a relationship with Jesus. Because confession begins with a change of heart. It continues then with a change of mind. We may be tempted once we see our sin to blame it on extenuating circumstances. Have you ever heard or maybe have you ever said, I am so sorry I lost my temper. It is because I am just exhausted. I'm sorry I lost my temper. I am just under so much pressure at work. Or the one that I find myself doing. I'm sorry I lost my temper if you had not if you had only heard the first or third or twelfth time I had told you, I wouldn't have lost my temper. Our natural tendency is to get defensive, to blame someone else or something else whenever it is we sin. But if we want to draw close to Jesus... We need to change our minds about who is responsible for the sin in our lives. I am. You are. We are. David gave in to temptation. And today in Psalm 51, he admits it. He could have said, it was all Bathsheba's fault for bathing on the roof where I could see her. He could have said, it was my other wives' fault because they were not being sensitive to my needs. He could have blamed it on the pressures of war. But once the sin was pointed out, he chose to take responsibility for his actions saying, against you I have sinned. You are proven right when you speak and justified when you judge. I have been a sinner from birth. David is taking responsibility for his actions and trying not to lay blame elsewhere. Confession. Drawing closer to Jesus calls for a change of heart, a change of mind, and finally for a change of direction. David's life got off track because he started doing things his own way. And suddenly he recognizes that things have careened out of control and that he needs to make things right. In Psalm 51, we see David realize that he cannot do it without God's help. Listen again to his words. Cleanse me, wash me, blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. We really mess things up when we choose to do things our own way, by ourselves. And it really does take an act of God to get us back on track. We must depend on God to cleanse us and wash us and forgive us. Too often we try to clean ourselves up, to try to make ourselves look good enough, presentable, to be acceptable before God. But it never works. There is only one way that we can come to God, just as we are, broken and sinful. And when we come as we are, confessing our sin, God, who is faithful and just, forgives us our sin and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Confession is not easy. It is not always pleasant to own up to our sin. 
It requires honesty and vulnerability with ourselves, with God, with others, which is really hard because it feels shameful, like we have failed. But the spiritual discipline of confession really does open our hearts and allows Jesus to draw us close. So tonight, having already confessed your sin, you will be invited later to come to the altar where you will be marked with the ashen cross to remind you of your sin and frailty and to draw you close to God who forgives you all your sins. Amen. Throughout the season of Lent, we will be using Martin Luther's um, explanation to the various articles of the creed. The first two weeks today and next weekend, we'll be using the first article. So I invite us to stand now. The first article of the Apostles' Creed states, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has created me together with all that exists. God has given me and still preserves my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all limbs and senses, reason, and all mental faculties. In addition, God daily and abundantly provides shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, fields, livestock, and all property, along with all the necessities and nourishment for this body and life. God protects me against all danger and shields and preserves me from all evil. And all this is done out of pure, fatherly, and divine goodness and mercy. All this I owe it to God to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. In a moment as we begin to focus on the part of the service of, and the imposition of ashes, I do want to let you know again, you've probably noticed there is no Holy Communion. And so when you come forward for, for the ashes, that's the time to leave your offering in the uh, plates that have been allotted up front for offering. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, a symbol of cleansing and renewal. This ancient sign of ashes upon our foreheads speaks of the frailty and uncertainty of human life. It speaks of judgment, God's condemnation of sin our total dependence upon God for life and calls us to heartfelt repentance, urging us to place our hope in God alone. Just as baptismal water suggests death and life, so do these ashes of Ash Wednesday. And as you desire to come forward, you will be marked with the cross of Christ and hear those words, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. You may be seated.
accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through your, our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Led by Jesus Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Holy and gracious God, you call us and gather us as your people to be sent in service to the world. Grant us grace so we may observe this Lenten season in prayer, fasting, and works of love. Lead us not into temptation. You move us to cry out for justice and freedom from oppression. Shine your light on darkened places in our world and move us to work on behalf of all people elsewhere. Lead us not into temptation. Move us to care for all who know poverty of any kind, of health, of daily needs, and of spirit. We pray for our church family, and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Lead us not into temptation. Only you can turn us from our sin to live for you alone. Renew us in the covenant of baptism that we might live in the hope of all creation, reconciled and restored. Lead us not into temptation. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite all who are able to stand to do so to receive the benediction. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth, claim you as a child of light and strengthen you in your Lenten journey toward Easter living. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing. <laughs>
peace, serve the Lord.